The iPad has become so powerful in the last couple of years, and I find myself more and more comfortable editing photos with it, especially on my couch in all sorts of non-laptop positions. So here's my iPad photography workflow. There's no SD card reader on the iPad, so naturally having a dongle like this, it's a must. There are many sleek looking adapters out there, but today we'll just be using the old dongle that I have here. Having an adapter like this not only allow us to read the photos from the SD card, we can also attach another external hard drive in order to back up all the photos from our SD cards. And most likely the adapter that you got will have another USB-C port in there so you can charge the iPad at the same time while editing if you want to as well. And this is what I usually do, I'll be charging my iPad iPad, and at the same time, I'll back up all the photos from my SD card, then import all the photos into Lightroom CC so I can call them. Photo calling on the iPad is actually quite intuitive and easy to use. All you have to do is come down here to the star, and then on the left side of the panel, you can swipe up or down to choose how many star ratings do you want to rate this photo. And on the right side of the panel, you can swipe up to flag the photo or swipe down to unflag the photo. Or simply put it back to neutral. So personally, I use the star ratings for client works because there's more options in there. And then as for like my casual photo shoot with friends or if I'm going out for a photo walk, like street photography photos, I'll use the flag system and then flag the photo that I like the most and keep everything else in neutral. And that's just how I keep track of my photos. You can have your own system that makes more sense with your workflow. Usually after all that, my iPad will have enough juice for me to take it anywhere I want to edit the photos on there. The photos that we're using today are snaps that I took of my friend while we're catching up at this milk tea place. So once I flagged all the photos I want to edit, I'll just come back up here and filter out the photos in neutral and then delete all of them. This way I'll be able to save space on my Lightroom CC. Let's go ahead and go through some of the features that I use most often while editing. And we'll just do like a very light edit on this photo. But before we start, always remember to turn True Tone off because essentially it changes how your display looks. It automatically adjusts the color in the display to this warmer end of spectrum after dark. And depending on your environment, it'll constantly change the color on your iPad's display, which makes editing photos quite hard. So right on the side over here, this is where we can adjust all of the adjustments. We have like light color effects details and very top here you have profile. You can actually browse through different simulations since I'm using Fujifilm. So you can shoot in RAW and still have access to all of these. That way you don't have to shoot JPEG. So um, you can just tap on them and pick the one that you like the most. I'm gonna just keep with the Provia standard this time. Using the iPad to edit photos feels very different. And I'm probably biased because I love just having a pencil in my hand, just keep twirling around, playing with the pencil. But that feels of holding up your own photo in your hands and editing it with your hands using a pencil, it, it just hits different compared to a mouse and keyboard. For example, if you come to the tone curve, you can actually tap on these and adjust on the photo, so we can see all the changes while we're adjusting it. The Apple Pencil on the tone curve just feels very natural. By the way, you can use two fingers to tap on the screen or your photo to be exact and bring out information as well as the histogram in the Lightroom CC. You can find histogram from most of the photo editing software and modern digital cameras. Basically, it's a graphical representation of a tonal value of a photo from 0% brightness to 100% brightness. It's a great indication of where the photo is clipping. So as we were talking about the tone curve, you can see the tone curve right on top of your photo instead of the computer Lightroom Classic where the tone curve is on the side. So you're looking back and forth for changes on your image. And let's go ahead and crop this photo real quick before we go any further. So let's go for 4x5. This is usually what I go with because um, of Instagram, of course. But I also like how 4 by 5 percent of photo, especially in portraits. So that's why I go with 4 by 5 for portraits anyways. 
That's probably my favorite aspect ratio for portrait. By the way, when you're cropping a photo, you can always um, double tab to uncrop everything. Basically, you reset everything and then crop again. But in this case, we're gonna go back to four by five. And right there, that looks good. Whenever you're adjusting settings on Lightroom CC, you can always double tab to reset the value or you can adjust the value by increments like so and this is going by increments of five i believe some of the settings are in increments of 10. here's another feature that i use all the time whenever you're adjusting values of highlights black and white you can always adjust the slides and tap and hold on the photo with your finger and you will be able to see which part of the photo is clipping. So on a black and white, the slide will show you where true white or true black is. The same idea works with sharpening as well. The photo will turn into grayscale, so it's easier for us to visualize where the sharpening effect on the photo is. And masking under sharpening, just like the Alt and Option key in the Lightroom Classic, in Lightroom CC over here, we can use the same trick, sliding the mask while tapping on the photo. And as you see, the white part is where the sharpening is taking effect. So this way, we can really define the outline of the subject and where you want the sharpening to be on. Editing the color mix on the iPad using Apple Pencil is actually pretty fun because you can actually pick, let's say, saturation on the green behind her. We can adjust that and take that away about right there and then change the hue of the green as well like so and of course you can have individual adjustments for each color the hue saturation and the luminance i feel like editing photos on an ipad feels more personal it's like writing a journal using a pen and a notebook the old school way compared to writing a journal on a computer with the screen and keyboard it somehow adds more personality in the photo that we're editing. It's really got that hands-on kind of feel to it. Another part of photo editing I enjoy using the iPad is using Apple Pencil for masking tool. So if we come down here and then you can actually add right here at this corner. Auto mask works really well on the Lightroom CC and it's really easy to use. And if I want to focus on very small detail, I can do so with the Apple Pencil with no problem. So usually on a portrait like this, I always kind of like highlight the eye a bit by using the masking tool here. Not too much or else it's gonna look very weird. Like, yeah, she looks like a, I don't know, like a witch or something, but just a little bit right there is good. Raise the contrast a bit here as well, and then let's go ahead and go to the other eyes. I don't think I'm gonna add too much on this eye because um, it's kind of in the shadow, so it'll look very weird if I um, do it too much. Yeah, I feel like dragging the masking tool on the iPad using Apple Pencil is very intuitive. Like it's very easy to adjust all these little things. Right there should be good. Let me double check real quick. Right there, yeah. That's how you make your model's eye pop. If you come down here, this also has versions too. You can save edit version, which is good if you want to save multiple versions of your edit of one photo. You can use this if you have like different versions that you want to show your client or use it to make your own presets and compare them using the same photo. Speaking of presets, over here, on the second tab, you can actually find your own presets if you have any and just go in there and add your presets to the photo if you want to edit that way as well. For this edit, we actually use the, I believe it's the Provia standard for this photo. So that's why I didn't add my own presets on here. But usually I'll probably start off with my presets and then edit from there. And by the way, all of my presets will be down in the description. Definitely go check them out if you haven't already. Not that we're done with the photo, let's go ahead and export. And then usually I go export as. Over here, I usually leave it at JPEG with 
80% image quality. Now there's one thing that I do is to go to more option and you can see output sharpening. Since I'm gonna go ahead and post this photo on Instagram and maybe Twitter too, I'm gonna choose screen for output sharpening. It doesn't really add much. A little sharpness defines the edge and usually adds a bit of brightness to your image. Most image will benefit from a bit of sharpening at export. I feel like editing photos on the iPad is definitely doable, especially once you figure out your workflow and you have everything you need set up. Overall experience is very enjoyable and fun, especially you get that hands-on interaction with your own photo. Even though it doesn't have everything, but it has most of the things that you need from Lightroom to edit your photos. And you're greeted with a very familiar layout if you used Lightroom before. Editing small batch of photos works really well. And I really enjoy how I can just take my iPad everywhere and just edit. Especially I can watch my anime and edit at the same time. That's awesome. And if you want to do everything by just using an iPhone, like taking photos, editing photos, That'll definitely work and this might be the video that you want to watch next. All of the tips and tricks that we talked about today in Lightroom CC would also apply.